Well, hey, thanks so much for choosing to join us today. We are reading the last of the Beatitudes as we kind of close this section of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is written to have three different sections, and each one of those sections has three sections in it. It's an incredible uh, work that Jesus does. Jesus goes into a mountain, and he gives this incredible, powerful, very, very challenging, but very thoughtful and helpful message. And uh, as we close out this Sermon on the Mount section of the Beatitudes, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. And then he does something fascinating. He says, for your reward is great in heaven. So he's showing them the future. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So Jesus, in this moment of talking about, hey, when you're going through persecution, it's going to feel very, very much like you're in the moment. And he offers us a way of escape. He says, think of the future and the past. Look towards the future and look towards the past to know, uh, to find courage for the moment today. David said something similar. David said, I will recall all the times that you have rescued me. To recall is to call back to memory, to purposely remember on purpose and say, hey, I am telling myself that I need to think about the previous times. Now, when we talk about persecution, he says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Okay. It's important to remember that Jesus is going to say why this persecution happens. He says, number one, for righteousness sake. Another time he says, for others will revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. So there's a couple things to remember. God is not saying you're blessed if you're just unkind and rude and you're just mean, but you're also a Christian. Like that, He's not saying that, that he's blessing you for being rude. He's saying if, if you're being persecuted for righteousness sake, if other, others are uttering falsely about you, and they're doing it for my sake. These are important things to remember. God is not advocating that we be mean and rude and grumpy and unkind, that we take things personally and we hold grudges and we, we keep track of what's going on. He's not saying that. He's saying, hey, if it's for righteousness sake, if it's falsely, and the reason it's false is because they're, they're doing this for, for me, they're, 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 they're accusing you of things, and they're trying to really persecute me. He says, hey, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. And uh, when we think of persecution, uh, he says, uh, it's so fascinating to me, blessed are those who are persecuted. And then he says, blessed are you when others revile you. There's a couple different ways that we're persecuted. There is, of course, just overt persecution, which, which happens around the world where you are killed for your faith in Christ. We see this in other countries, uh, not so much in America, uh, but in other countries we, we see people actively being hunted and killed because they believe in Christ. There's also covert, which is, which is more like um, you're mocked, you're ridiculed, you're made fun of because you believe in Christ. They tell you that you're, you're this, you're that. They, they call you these different things, label you as someone who's hateful or all of those things. And then there's even undercover persecution, which is other Christians who are um, trying to grow their platform or they're trying to grow their church or they're trying to grow their movement. So they tear down yours and they attack yours and, oh, you go to that church, well, you should go to a real church. And, and they, they kind of uh, begin to attack you because they, they're trying to grow theirs. Now, First John talks all about that and says those people, they're, they're not walking in fellowship with light. They're walking in dark. They're living like the world because that's what the world does. Um, but there's also imagined persecution, which we kind of talked about, which is like, oh, I'm, I'm being persecuted for Christ. Maybe you're being persecuted because you're unkind, right? Like it's always something that we should ask every day. Am I being unkind here? Am I, am I the reason for this? But when, when those people are attacking us and we're, do, we're, we're trying to live right with God and man, and they're attacking us and persecuting us in different ways for his sake, 
Well, then he says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. And he offers us again this path forward. He says that we can rejoice when this happens. Be glad for your reward is great in heaven. So he's saying, hey, look, when, when you're under this bombardment, when people are, are like criticizing, attacking, persecuting you, or if you live in other countries and they're physically doing this, he says, think of heaven. Think of eternity with me. And then he also says, and look back because this has happened before. The prophets were persecuted. We, we think of many of the prophets throughout the Old Testament. Almost all of them are heavily persecuted for Scripture's sake. And so as we think of this, it's important to remember that God makes a way forward. That way may fo- forward may be one we don't understand. It may, be, it may be difficult to understand, but if you're right now going through persecution because of your belief in God, if you're going through persecution because of what you believe about Scripture, think of heaven. Think of what God will give us someday. Hold your courage, keep a smile on your face, and be happy because you're also among those who have been persecuted before. And so these things should help propel us, give us strength, give us courage in a difficult time. Always remember, church, you matter.